Aston Villa, Southampton and Brentford, to name just a few. Eight job applications and not a single interview, even following our remarkable season last year when we qualified for the Champions League. And so we are here for another season, it looks like, at Livingston. And can we do better than we did last season? Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to The Road to Glory, part 57, season 7, here at Livingston. And if you are new to the channel and you like FM content, then why not subscribe, like, watch and comment, help the channel to grow and help us to support the very worthwhile cause that you can see scrolling up above. And while we're on that subject, thank you very much to Steph and Ben, who are the most recent contributors to the Just Giving page that we have set up. And you can find a link to that in the description below. Even if you just leave a pound or two pounds, every little bit counts and everything will mount up and we will make a difference. Many, many thanks to all of you who've contributed. Thank you so much for your generosity. But before we begin season seven, let's take a look at what happened in season six. Let's go to the season review. And it has to be said, what a brilliant season it was. Let's have a look at the new arrivals. And as usual, there weren't too many new arrivals and most of them came in on loan. Most impressive of them all, Giuseppe Fontana, who's a player that I really like, 19 year old defensive midfielder who came out with an average rating of 7.03, scoring one goal and three assists. Carter Whittaker had a fairly decent season, but only a 6.91 average rating. And Lewis Sibley also had a very good opening season, shall we say, with an average of 6.91. Not too impressed with any of the others. And the likes of Jonathan Valley and Dwarf Collins were not really interested in signing. And so in terms of signings, which reflect the budget that we had, we didn't do all that particularly well last season. But in terms of results, it was an absolutely fantastic season in the Premiership, finishing in second. And we got off to a great start and we continued through the new year. And it only fell apart towards the end of the season. But Celtic were obviously the dominant team and they finished on top by a country mile. But to finish in second ahead of Rangers and split the big two up was a remarkable achievement. In the Europa League, we finished in the semi-final and we were knocked out there by Manchester United. It was an excellent campaign and I was very, very pleased with how we did. In the Scottish Cup, not so good. We were knocked out in the quarter-final by Rangers which was to be expected in all honesty because we were in a very difficult period playing game after game after game. And in the Premier Sports Cup, we were beaten by Celtic eventually and finished as runners up, having been beaten in the final, but a very creditable performance as well. But it was in the Premiership where we excelled and that was an excellent, excellent performance. In terms of the moments to remember, the 5-0 victory away at Partizan in the Europa League and also the 5-1 victory away at, I at Ajax in the Europa League. Excellent performances. And the goal of the season was a goal by Penris. And I, I don't believe that we can actually see that goal. But we scored many, many good goals last season. And I'm sure that this was as good as any of them. In terms of the finances... Well, we stayed where we are in terms of our reputation and we didn't sign any new sponsorship deals, but we are all in the green there financially. And financially, it was a very, very good year and our finances have never been better. In terms of merchandise, the shirt sold 1,424. And Nubla, surprisingly, was the top of the shirt sales with Anderson, Sibley, Martin and Sweet making up the top five. And in terms of the best 11, and the fans seem to like this asymmetric system, there were a number of standout performers. Nubla deputising for Anderson up front so often. Josh Martin had a good season. 
Jack Moylan had a very good season, as well as Omienga, Penrice, Fitzwater and Akinola. I think Akinola deserves more playing time than he's been getting, but he did start last season 38 times and he justified my faith in him. And so in terms of the best 11, pretty good, apart from maybe James Sweet, who's not a natural right back. And Lewis Sibley is a little bit disappointing, and Carter Whitaker also a little bit disappointing. But hopefully that's just their bedding in season, and we're going to see a lot better from them next season. And in terms of accolades, manager of the month for August, that's all I managed myself. Fans player of the season was Nubler. Giuseppe Fontana was the young player of the season. And signing of the season, Louis Sibley. Penrice scored the goal of the season as we saw. Anderson was the top goal scorer once again with 23 goals in the season. But again, his form is so erratic that it's difficult to know what to do with him. Most assists were by Josh Martin with 24 assists. He deserves much more playing time now. And the most player of the match awards was Bruce Anderson with eight. Tunji Akinola had the highest average rating with an average rating of 7.2 and Akinola had the best pass completion as well. So he deserves to be a first team regular now. In terms of record breakers, most goals by a player in a league match, Bruce Anderson with three. He scores a lot of hat tricks. And then Josh Martin had most assists by a player in the season, a remarkable 24 assists last season. And Bruce Anderson, most league goals by a player. He has now scored 76 goals for the club. Absolutely brilliant player, but for me, not consistent enough. And in terms of history, we did look sharp out of the gate at the beginning again. We do start well as a team and we performed well for, through the early season, through the mid-season and only fell away at the end of the season. So it was a very, very good season. And today we will be looking into what has happened in the transfer window and we will be playing the second leg of the third qualifying round in the Champions League path where we will be playing against PSV Eindhoven at home. We couldn't have had a more difficult opponent in our section and drawing PSV Eindhoven was not great news for me. But we have played the first leg already. Let's have a look at what happened in the first leg. And so that was quite an amazing away victory. And if we have a look at what's happened on the pitch since the season began, we got off to a fairly decent start where we had a very sneaky 1-0 home win against Hibernian. Then we played that Champions League path third qualifying round first leg against PSV Eindhoven, which you just saw where we won 4-1. And then another very sneaky little 1-0 away victory at Motherwell and Hibernian and Motherwell well, we were very lucky to come away with the victories. And so today, we'll be featuring the second leg of the third qualifying round against PSV Eindhoven. And being 4-1 up, you'd think that we're probably home and dry, but I think it's going to be a lot closer at the end than actually the scoreline suggests. And what will happen after that in the Champions League? And if we do manage to qualify, and we should, we will have to play either Ozizek or Braga, and that will determine who of these bottom four teams goes into the Champions League proper. If we do get through, and I'm pretty confident, then I think we should beat either Ozizek 
or Braga, but that's for future episodes. For now, let's have a look at what's happened in the transfer window. And as you recall, we did bring in Dylan Levitt from Dundee United on a free that was completed way before the transfer window opened. And then we brought in Charlie McNeil we, from Bolton for about a million pounds. And he was brought into the squad because I also remember him from the Newport days in 22 where he was an extremely good player. Found him lounging around in Bolton. And so we paid £875,000 for him. He's here as a squad player to put pressure on Bruce Anderson. They are very much of a muchness, but Charlie McNeil has the right attributes for a striker. He's 15 finishing, 14 composure. He's got a good first touch. His passing is decent, although his vision isn't great. But playing him as an advanced forward, well, I wouldn't expect his vision to be of any relevance. He has decent physical attributes. So I was hoping that he would provide good backup to Anderson. And when Anderson was out of form, he could come in step up to the plate and take over when Anderson had those barren periods however Charlie McNeil seems to be just as bad as Anderson he had a good start coming on as a substitute with a rating of 7.2 he since then had a rating of 6.3 and 6.4 having to deputize for Anderson who unfortunately has got himself injured and out for a couple of months so it looks like we have two very similar players who are going to play well for periods of time and then go into these dreadful dips of form let's hope that these dips of form don't happen at the same time so Charlie McNeil has come in as a backup striker and I hope that it's going to put pressure on Bruce Anderson, who then might rise to the challenge. And we also have brought in a right back, Harrison Ashby. He's come in from Motherwell for 725000 He looks like a very good player. I have heard the name before, and so looking at him and I desperately needed a right back full backs are a big issue again and we do have sweet injured currently and so full backs have become quite a big issue once again and I'm hoping that Harrison Ashby will be the solution that we need at right back he's 26 years old he's outside what the board want us to do the board are constantly upset by me not signing players under the age of 23 but you've got to give me some money to strengthen this team or I'm not playing the game and then we've brought in Murray Johnson for 2.8 million pounds he is a goalkeeper and we desperately needed a goalkeeper but he's a very good goalkeeper for this level and he's had a very decent start to the season and his form is very very good a 7.6 and a 7.4 in his first three games he's played very very well and doing a very good job for us but a very expensive signing and then I have just recently brought in another fullback from Celtic on loan. He is a left back. He's a young boy. He is a 22 year old. He has decent physicals, but his technicals are not the best I've ever seen, nor his mentals. He's got a lot of development yet to do, but he will have to play from time to time because we are going to have to be playing a lot of fixtures here. And we do have problems at fullback once again. And in terms of players who have left the club, Nicky Devlin, who was desperately unhappy. Two of the fullbacks that I had were desperately unhappy. Jay Ben and now Nicky Devlin have left because they just did not want to stay here anymore. They wanted new challenges. And it does seem to me that FM is once again picking on the fullback area. Daniel Zaya, who probably wasn't going to get a number of starts this season, we've decided to let him go out on loan. And that actually freed up a little bit of wage budget, which we might still be able to use. And so we do have, once again, a very, very small squad. We've had a lot of injuries. Jamie Bowden has been injured for most of the season. Bruce Anderson is still out. He's been out for about six weeks, and he is still out. James Sweet is the latest to be out for around about four to five weeks. 
and it's causing me desperate problems because we cannot at the moment put a full bench out. We have a small squad. I don't think that we're going to be able to do very well this season, given the amount of games that we're going to be expected to play. I think cup competitions, we just have to play the reserve team and if we get knocked out, we get knocked out. I'll be happy not to play in cup competitions and we just need to focus on the Champions League and the league. In terms of the board vision for this season, we have to reach the Champions League proper. That is required. But they are pleased that we are on course, even though we haven't qualified for the Champions League proper yet. We have to finish mid-table in the Premiership, and that is going to be a tough ask this season, given the squad that we've been able to put together. We need more money, and it does seem that money's not available in Scotland, and I was watching in envy as Celtic in the news were bidding 30-something million for players, and I felt in order to catch up Celtic and Rangers, we're going to have to have money on the table here, or it's not going to happen. And then we have to reach the latter stages of the Scottish Cup and the League Cup. That's not going to happen. We're going to be playing a very weakened team in those competitions and the board are just going to have to accept we are not good enough to do what they require. And so I think that this would be a good time to go and play against PSV Eindhoven. What a shock result that was in the first leg. Can we continue that? PSV Eindhoven are an absolutely brilliant team. I would rate them the same as I would rate Celtic. And we are definitely not as good as Celtic. And so we have a very, very tough game here today. I'm going to play in exactly the same way. Hopefully it'll be enough and the three goal cushion that we already have will see us through. Let's go and kick some balls. And so the team for today is Johnson in goal with Ashby, Akinola, Boyle and Penris at the back. Omienga, Levitt and Martin in the middle with Sibley, Henderson and Nubler making up the front three. Can we do this? I think it's possible. It's 4-1 at the moment. Let's hope that we can go out there and get a very decent result. And yeah, we'll tell them, forget about the first leg. It's not important now. What's important is that you put up a very, very good performance here today and that we win this football match and that we go into the next round. And uh, it is going to be the first highlight for PSV and they are looking to bring it out from the back. And there's a long ball over the top. They do like to play that long ball, I noticed in the, in the first leg. And here they come. We've got to be doing a little bit better than what we're doing. We're not closing them down very well and they do have a chance. There's a ball into the box and it's cleared away, but it's a poor clearance. And <laughs> we haven't started well. And if FM is anything to go by in the past, we will give away the first goal. And there is, no it isn't, and we have cleared it. And generally when you do have a big lead like this, FM will put you a goal or two down and then you'll get one back late on and we are bringing it up the field and I think I'm on extended highlights no we're on key highlights I'm not quite sure what that highlight was about but it is at the moment nil nil that's good enough for me if we can keep it at nil nil I'll be very very happy and it's a fairly even game we've just about edging possession as I'm hoping that that's where we're going to be strong this season. And we're just about edging the game, really. And there's a ball through to Sibley. Sibley bursting towards the box. Sibley with a shot, and it's a great save. And it remains Livingston nil, PSV Eindhoven nil. And at the moment, I will take that. If you made it full-time now, I'd take that quite happily. We're looking like we might be just edging the game, but we need to be very, very careful. I'm going to take a look at who might be causing us problems for a PSV. And it does look like their left back might be what we need to worry about. But there's Levitt with a ball over the top and Sibley's in and Sibley has scored. And we have gone a goal ahead and FM hasn't made us go a goal behind this time. We're now 5-1 up on the day and that probably must mean game over. It was a free kick. Henderson fed Levitt and Levitt's ball over the top to Sibley and Sibley put it into the corner. What a player. 
What a goal. And it is now 1-0 to Livingston. We do have a corner and Martin will swing in the corner. And it's headed clear, but it's going to be picked up by Henderson on the edge of the penalty area. He's robbed. That was not good play by Henderson. Needs to get stuck in, win it back. But here come PSV and PSV are looking to bring it forward. 25 minutes are gone. 5-1 up in the tie. I'll take that. We need to clear this ball. I was dreadful defending by Akinola. And there's the equaliser. I have no idea what Akinola was doing there. <laughs> I was absolutely dreadful defending. Akinola is going to have a rollicking here. <laughs> that was absolutely shocking. <laughs> and uh, our lead has been just gifted away by Akinola. Absolutely dreadful. Let's have a look who's causing us the problems. Teze is being a little bit of a problem. Um, maybe we need to make some adjustments to our opposition instructions. And I hope that defensively we're going to be playing a little bit better than that. That was absolutely dreadful. We're still pretty much edging the game possession-wise. We have 70% of the possession. I think that we should be winning this. And uh, we are committing a lot of fouls. But at the moment, I'm not too bothered. I want them to get stuck in. And we're not picking up too many yellow cards. And we are making mistakes at the back. This is a big, big deal. And we could even give another goal away here. That was another error at centre-back. And an here it comes. There is the goal that I was expecting. We've made two dreadful errors at centre-back now. And... If this continues, we're going to probably lose this game. I don't really know how to solve that. I'm not responsible for players' errors on the pitch. And it's now... And that was a goalkeeping error as well. I'd expect Johnson to do better than that. The whole defence is playing absolutely dreadful. And I'm I'm actually going to berate the team. I'm, I'm fed up of this... Oh, I've just praised them, I think. <laughs> which is not a good idea. And, uh... Oh, click the wrong button there. We'll go into the dressing room. We are 2-1 down. I'm going to tell them it's totally unacceptable what is going on here. Absolutely unacceptable. Defensive-wise, we are being shocking. Although their ratings are not that bad. And I suspect that if this continues, we're going to lose this match. And we're going to lose the tie. And there's a long ball over the top. And they are in again. And they've put it over the crossbar. This is a really, really poor performance, and I'm not very, very happy about this. I mean, really, it's out of my hands now. The team are just playing absolutely dreadfully. I think I'm going to make some changes. And so we have made some changes. There were a number of players having bad games. We've brought on Fitzwater for Akinola. Murphy has come on for Penrice. And we're now going to have to take off Omienga. And we are really not looking like a very good team here at the moment. We've just about managed to hold on to this, I think. I'm going to go positive because I don't... I'm going to go attacking now because I don't want to lose the game. And just hope that we can draw. Because this has been a very, very poor performance. It's the first defeat of the season. It's the first live game of the season. So it figures that that's the way it was going to turn out. Defensively, if you make errors, two errors like that, there's nothing the manager can do, nothing I can do, just a dreadful performance. But we have won the tie, and that's the main thing. And I'm just going to tell the team I'm really not happy. Or should I say that it wasn't an excellent win. I'm happy with how the tie went, and that's what I'm going to say. But they really should be told that I'm not happy with that performance we have qualified for the next round and we will play Braga in the next round not exactly how I wanted it to go today it's the first blip 
on the season there will be many more this is not a good good side this is not a strong squad and if we make a good start hopefully that will carry us through to the end of the season if we start to drop in form now we are going to have a very very tough season we do have some tough games coming up we have Inverness in the league a game we should win and then we will play the games against Braga and that's where we'll come back we will play Braga in the Champions League playoff path second leg and then we will play the home game against Dundee United and that's it for this episode today if you are new to the channel and you like FM content then why not subscribe like watch and comment help the channel to grow and help us to support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling up there and I think this year you are going to be sitting there while I suffer and enjoying watching me suffer this is probably going to be my toughest season of the save and all that remains to be said now is we will see you in the next episode <laughs>